Well, good morning and welcome to the year of our Lord 2023. Most people who know me well <clears throat> have been texting me and checking on me a lot in the last uh, eight to ten hours um, and uh, wondering about my emotional well-being uh, following the missed field goal in the last couple seconds last night. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's going to be a happy new year regardless because uh, Michigan lost, which is just as bad as good as an Ohio State win. So happy new year. It's going to be a happy one. We're going to make it, us Buckeye fans. And if you're a Georgia fan, blessings to you as well. <laughs> as always, we come to this time of year um, with this kind of renewed sense of hope. It's a, it's a hopeful time. And we've just been through this great time of hope where we've been reminded of this great gift of our, uh, of our Savior. And um, so this time is a hopeful time. And, and, and also, it has such poten within the potential for that hope, we also can, can be facing this sometimes with this uh, possibility of discouragement and with disappointment. Because they're two equally impactful possibilities. And somewhere in this messy middle, some of us are as well as we approach this time called the new year. So we seek together this morning this God-sized blessing on a brand new year, carrying not only all of our hopes and dreams, but also our fears and our insecurities. You know, most of us catch this fresh energy, though, where we, we're like, hmm, a new year, I, I can do some things differently, right? Raise your hands if you've, if you've had that kind of thought in the last 24 hours. I, I can improve. I can, I can do better. And we have this kind of uh, self-help machine in industry out there through books and social media and uh, new gym memberships. They're, they're counting on you to follow that energy, aren't they? We, of course, capture these resolutions, as we call them, as a, as a heightened um, desire to do better, to do better in life. And wouldn't it be fun or better yet, better yet, wouldn't it be helpful if that self-improvement resolution energy increased our self-awareness a little bit and maybe in this new year improved our relationships? Who would be in for that? Raise your hand. All right. A couple of you. Well, let me see if I can get that to all of you here by the end of this sermon. <laughs> I'll work on that here. Okay. When the scripture this morning, uh, Jesus is being tested... By the, religious, by the religious and cultural experts called the Pharisees. And a lawyer out of that group, he asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was. And Jesus offered this historical response that every Pharisee and onlooker and curious ear would immediately recognize. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You see, this was the Shema. This was this revered voice of Moses found in Deuteronomy 5, the voice of every religious Israelite that had for generations posted in their homes and aspired with their lives. His reference got their attention, really got their attention, though, when he paired an additional reference from Leviticus 19, with the Shema, holding the love of neighbor as yourself to the standard of the greatest commandment. The wise, the wise teachers of the law, they thought they had this love God, the Shema thing. They thought they had that down. They thought they had that under control. But they were kind of missing the mark at this loving your neighbor thing. And now Jesus is holding on these two commandments, all the law and the prophets is what he says. In other words, everything else is second priority next to these two standards. And that kind of made them uncomfortable. And it may make us feel a little uncomfortable this morning, honestly. But I guess the question is here at this moment, could we hear this morning as Jesus speaks to this lawyer, answers this lawyer's question, 
with the greatest commandment, could we receive this as the greatest resolution? An inspired standard for our new year, 2023, that takes priority over everything else. I mean, this honestly could capture us every day. But especially on this day, an attention of new things and new desires to improve. Could we place this at the top of our New, year, New Year's resolution list? Believe you me, I've tried this before. Back in 2010, I, I was in a similar spot like this today. I, I was actually probably over in the Mac and um, offering a sermon just like this, inspiring all of us to resolve to improve our relationships. And I looked back at the sermon a couple weeks ago, and I, I talked about being vulnerable. I talked about st stretching our relationship muscles. I talked about being aware of where bitterness could creep in to our relationships. Well, you know what? 13 years later, and I'm still no better than any of that stuff. I still do the same crummy things. Isn't that interesting? And I don't say this this morning to beat myself up, but rather to suggest that this resolution, if we so choose to take it, can be tough. And it takes a lot of work. And I've come to realize that none of us are hardwired with the skills to love others well. If I want to get better at this, if we want to get better at this, even in our best of intentions, with our best of intentions, we have to work at it. Now, there's a couple things that we can, be say, can be said about this. And there's all kinds of research that talks about why these New Year resolutions fizzle. And they don't last. In the journal of Psychology Today, Dr. Aldo Cerverco suggested that close to 80% of those who make a New Year's resolution fail to follow through upon that resolution by February. Wow. Back 13 years ago, I had a resolution to do better, but I, I lacked some ingredients to make those relational goals stick, I think. And Dr. Severka says there are seven possible reasons why, why these resolutions fail. Number one, the goal's too big. We need steps. We, we set a goal like this at the beginning of the year, but we need steps to get there, and we forget about these steps, and we, we can't reach the goal because it's too big. Number two, self-doubt affects our commitment. We just don't believe. We don't have enough belief that we can achieve the resolution. Number three, we, we refuse to put knowledge into practice. We read the, on a book and it says we get all this knowledge about what we can do, but then we have a failure to launch. And we don't do the behaviors that are suggested by our knowledge. And number four, our goal is the source of suffering rather than enjoyment. And sometimes we give up too quickly when things get too hard. Number five, we keep our goal a secret for fear of, fear of failing. When there's no accountability, goals can get very lonely and discouraging without the help of others. Number six, our goals aren't clear. We don't know why we set the goal. If we don't have a why, um, it doesn't make sense after a while why I'm doing it. If I, if I make a goal to, to wake up at 1 a.m. to work out every day for two hours, I kind of lose my sense of why, I think, after maybe 30 minutes of that. <laughs> don't I? And finally, number seven, the goal is too vague or not specific enough. Our, our goals need to be measurable and observable and tangible so that we know if we're, we're getting somewhere. So those are seven things, seven helpful aha reasons that our, our New Year's resolutions fail. And, and, and they're good to be aware of, but, but specifically for right now, how do we learn from these possible hurdles to move us toward healthier relationships in the new year? Better yet, what if there was an opportunity to learn and commit to loving our neighbor better with other folks, would, would that interest us? And I also want to recognize at this moment, as we're talking about relationships, that there might be many of us that receive this kind of resolution possibility with some fear and anxiety. 
And maybe there's just too much brokenness. Maybe I feel that some relationships are just too broken to fix. What if I find work on this just too painful for me? And those are realities that may face some of us. Of these seven possible failures, I don't know if I can do much about number four because relationships are going to take some work. They take some struggle. And it's going to be involved if improvement's going to take place. And you may not initially get enjoyment (laughs) from the work that's involved with improving your relationships, but I might have some help with the other six. No matter how tough a task like this may appear, learning and practicing new skills together with other people may offer God an opportunity to grow us relationally even in the midst of our great brokenness. It's possible that every one of us here today need a helpful way forward in the midst of relational brokenness. So near the end of January, uh, we're going to once again regroup with small group gatherings um, for four weeks on on Wednesday night. And we're going to have a four-week study called Relationship Matters. And this is going to be a study based upon the work of Peter and Jerry Scazzaro, who used to be pastors of a church in New York City. They have a study called Emotionally Healthy Relationships. And, and Pastor Katie and I have been working on this, uh, this study that we're going to do together as, as a church, as small groups, at the end of January. And some of the helpful skills we'll explore during this time are um, how, to rele- how, how to read a relational temperature of a moment with somebody how to stop mind reading others my wife's ready for that one for me to learn about that one um and um how to clarify expectations that we have of one another and how to listen listen with curiosity and here's a fun one how to fight cleanly sounds like fun doesn't it who wants to sign up If you've been a part of a small group in the past, or you're interested in joining a small group, this is, this is the time. This is the time to join and to lean into relationships with other people as we learn how to relate to one another and to love each other better. And in these groups, there's going to be plenty of space and grace to learn and grow our, our relationship skills. The Relationship Matters study will be a great opportunity to learn practical skills to increase and access our self-awareness, to get some accountability and get specific about some steps that we can take to help us love God and love others well. And you're going to be hearing about this opportunity in the next couple weeks. But for this moment right now, as we get prepared for communion, if loving God and loving people better in 2023 is the greatest resolution, what might be one step? You know, diving into this small group thing, it might not be for you. I get it. But what might be one step or move in the relationship area that you might make today? Is there maybe one person or one group that maybe you have failed to appreciate well in the past year and you need to do a better job this year? Maybe a person that you need to maybe let know the, the depths of your, your love for, that you really haven't done a really good job of in the past. As I pray and, and prepare for communion, I encourage you to reflect upon that possibility right now. 2023, in resolving to love God and love people better. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this moment and we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon us as we enter this new year. We pray your Holy Spirit comes upon us to renew us, to rekindle us and reawaken us to new possibilities, Father God, when it comes to relationships. 
Give us curious ears to hear you well. Clear eyes to see you well. And a rigorous faith to believe in you well. Give us the courage to follow you on this adventure of grace wherever you might lead. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray these things. Amen. All right, we now come to the moment to where we come to the table, the first opportunity this year to come to the Lord's table and, and uh, join in this powerful time of remembrance where we get to remember God's love for us. And so I invite you to join with me the great Thanksgiving as we prepare to do that. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, raised the cup, said this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so, as reminders in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Discipleship Minister Cindy Hughes forward to come help me serve uh, communion to you this morning on this New Year's Day. And uh, before we do that, let's pray as we consecrate these elements together. Father God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.